accompanying Michael on some of those trips to Israel. And during these missions, Michael has inspired many of us with his unfaltering love and genuine support for the Jewish community as well as the people of the state of Israel. Today is Rabbi Miller's last day, last day as executive vice president and CEO of the JCRC. He will transition to a new role as a consultant and CEO emeritus. He leaves behind a tremendous legacy of intracommunal consensus building, his ability to bridge gaps between people of various ethnicities and religions is renowned throughout the country and throughout the world. So in closing, I wanna thank Michael and I wanna wish him and his wonderful wife the best. I give him a hearty mazel tov on a job very well done. And to just say, Michael, you are, you're a treasure, you're a gift. You are someone who has done so much for our city for so many years and we know you will still be involved. People at all levels of government have counted on you for guidance and for advice and for healing and for bringing folks together. So from the New York City Council, on this last day of June, 2021, I wanna give you a standing ovation to thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Vanessa Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I hereby make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of May 27, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. M321, city debt and reserves. Uh, before we get there, Madam Majority Leader, I, I forgot to uh, make a motion to uh, spread the invocation in full and upon the record. Thank you. Okay. We'll begin at the top again. M Me Excuse me. Messages and papers from the mayor. M321, city debt and reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M317, transfer of city funds. Finance. Pre-considered M318, new city revenue. Finance. Pre-considered M319, chancellor five-year plan. Finance. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to the chambers, everyone. It is uh, really good to finally be back. This is a historic occasion for many reasons. I have to say I am so grateful we are not on Zoom and we are together. It is our first in-person meeting in 16 months. It is our last budget together as a council and one of the most consequential. New York City has been through so much since we last saw each other collectively in person. Today we are voting on a budget that will help us rebuild from this awful pandemic, reimagine our city in a way that is more fair and equitable, and with a focus on recovering from the losses that we never could have imagined a year ago. Throughout this pandemic, I have given us the total number of New Yorkers that we have tragically lost. And today, the latest number is 33,415 New York City residents have lost their lives. 33,415 of our city's residents are gone. As I often say, it's important for us to remember these are our friends, our neighbors, parents, siblings, coworkers, colleagues, let us pause for a moment of silence for all of those New Yorkers that we've lost during this pandemic. Thank you. 
Today we're going to vote on the budget for fiscal year 2022, our final spending plan. In the past three and a half years, this council has stayed true to its priorities in doing the most good for the people who need it the most. Even when the economic downturn ripped a hole in our city budget last year, we protected the safety net for our vulnerable New Yorkers and increased emergency funding for food pantries. This year, we were able to restore so much of the funding that we had to painfully cut last June and enhance funding for programs that will keep us on the path to recovery. None of this work would have been possible without a top-notch team. The members of the council and the staff have worked day and night. And so I want to thank, in no particular order, I want to thank the chair of our finance committee, Danny Drum, who has done a wonderful job. Thank you, Danny. I want to thank the chair of our subcommittee on the capital budget, Helen Rosenthal, who's done a great job. I want to thank all of the members of the budget negotiating team, each and every one of them, for the long hours they put in, the detail that they really cared about in understanding all the initiatives. I want to thank all of the members who participated in the delegations and uh, who have been working on the budget for a long time. And I really, really, really want to thank someone who has made this all possible uh, uh, before I get to the, the finance team, I want to just recognize uh, the Chief of Staff of the City Council, Jason Goldman, who has done a wonderful, wonderful job. I'm very grateful to Jason for everything that he's done. Thank you, Jason. And, of course, a special thanks to the entire finance team, and in particular, the finance division's leadership team, and that includes Ray Majeski, Nathan Toth, Regina Pareto Ryan, Paul Scimone, Emre Adev, Rebecca Chasen, Paul Sturm, Doheny Sampura, uh, Isha Wright, Krillian Francisco, John Russell, and Chima Obachere. I want to thank all of them for their tireless work. Thank you to the finance team. Whoever's here, uh, I want to thank you. I see Rebecca here. And then last but not least, we do it every year. She deserves a huge amount of credit. The number of hours dealing with each member, working with the staff, getting us to the finish line, someone who has been a wonderful, uh, fantastic, accomplished, uh, just, just great person to work with, uh, our budget director, LaTanya McKinney. I want to thank you, LaTanya, for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you, LaTanya, for everything. Thank you. I'm glad we get to thank you in person. Really glad. So this budget will help rebuild our city. We restored the quality of life services that we were forced to cut during the pandemic. That includes litter basket service, parks maintenance, and library service. New Yorkers deserve to walk on clean streets play in safe parks, and read in neighborhood libraries. We've also been building our reserves. We're adding $500 million more to the Rainy Day Fund that we created, which gets the Rainy Day Fund up to a billion dollars. This is something that was a priority to us and something that will help our city in the future. This budget also reimagines our city by making key investments in alternatives to incarceration. This includes almost $14.5 million in programs which provide individuals involved in the criminal justice system with uh, another path, such as community service or substance abuse counseling. $14.5 million to fund new mental health case management programs to provide 850 people with mobile and site-based intensive ongoing case management services in underserved communities. An additional $4.5 million to double fiscal year 2021's avail available funds to the intensive mobile treatment teams, which serve those with recent and frequent contact with the mental health, criminal justice, and homeless services systems. Recent behavior that is unsafe and escalating in those who are poorly served by traditional treatment models. $27 million in funding for the city's Cure Violence Program starting this uh, in summer 2022 and a commitment to double the city's Cure Violence Program workforce in fiscal 2022 and triple the workforce by fiscal 2023. This budget makes major investments in our schools at a time when our students really need help. This pandemic was so difficult for so many children and young people and we're taking steps to address so many of the problems that we've had in the past we're investing $18 million to reduce class sizes. 
or investing $26 million in a literacy curriculum to help students read at grade level and address learning loss. And we're helping address the emotional aspects of the pandemic on our children with additional funding for mental health programs. This budget provides money for a social worker in every single school and $5 million for direct mental health support to students. The reopening has brought so much joy to our city as we've seen over the last few weeks, and I am optimistic for our city's future. This council in our response, and our budget response, laid out a blueprint to recovery that we're very proud to say was largely realized in this budget. This is uh, my last budget, uh, and many of the members here's last budget, and I'm really proud of everything that we've collectively accomplished together. We have done so much good work. This council has stayed true to its values in good times and in bad, and I thank you for being part of this amazing work. Thank you all very, very much. I'm really grateful that you all got us here. And with that, I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader, and I look forward to voting on today's budget. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. Then we will move right into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, intros 20, 2331A and 2350A, property tax interest rates for owners affected by COVID-19. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered resos 1691 and 1692, base percentage and adjusted base proportion. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered resos 1693, transparency resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered resos 1694 through preconsidered resos 1698, property tax interest rates. Coupled on general orders. M300 and resos 1699 and 1700, expense revenue contract budget. Coupled on general orders. M301 and resos 1701 and 1702, executive capital budget. Coupled on general orders. M302 and preconsidered resos 1703, community development program. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M317 and resos 1704, transfer of city funds. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M318 and resos 1705, appropriation of new city revenues. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M319 and resos 1706, chancellor's five year plan. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M320 and preconsidered resos 1707, fixing the tax rate. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 815 and Reso 1708 through preconsidered LU 817 and Reso 1710 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. M276 through M307 various budget documents. Coupled to be filed. General orders calendar LU 790 and Reso 1711 and LU 791 and Reso 1712 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders, and I would ask that the clerk please take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Councilmember Adams. Yep, you can approach the, the front mic, Councilmember. Thank you. This is new. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I'd like to start by wishing a speedy re recovery to our colleague and co-chair of the Mighty Women's Caucus, Farrah Lewis. It is great to be back with my colleagues once again in these chambers. We've come such a long way since the start of the pandemic, and I am so happy to see all of you in person. Today, I will vote yes to adopt the fiscal year 2022 budget. Overall, I believe this budget addresses many important needs that our city and communities face. As we begin to recover from the pandemic, we must adequately fund the programs and services that keep our neighborhoods strong, safe, and thriving. After many weeks of hard work and negotiation, we have put in place what our city needs to come back stronger than ever. As chair of the Public Safety Committee, I must begin by addressing the NYPD budget. There is much work to do to address issues of excessive overtime, headcount, and civilianization, which are prevalent in this budget. Recognizing that there are so many moving pieces in this complicated agency, we also note the addition of new community ambassadors, mental health professionals, and others. We also recognize the landmark package of legislation enacted by this council regarding police reform, including the repeal of qualified immunity, making New York City the only jurisdiction in this country to have such a law. 
There is still so much work to do to penetrate long-standing systemic issues within the NYPD, and I am committed to that cause. I'm very proud of the budget that we're voting on today because we have not only restored our city's funding to pre-pandemic levels, but we have added enhancements that will go a long way to help New Yorkers in need. As co-chair of the, the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, I am proud that we have secured tremendous wins for communities of color in senior services, youth services, food equity, digital inclusion, in social and mental health services, for small businesses, adult literacy, foster care, and a $10 million education equity action plan to create a K through 12 black studies curriculum for New York City children. As a city, we fought for the non-legotiable necessary restoration of funds to our parks, libraries, sanitation services, and our beloved cultural organizations that not only New York, that, that only New York can present to the world. For all of these advancements and triumph, I thank Speaker Johnson for his leadership. Chief of Staff Jason Goldman, the finance chair of all chairs, council member Chair Drum, and the entire finance division led by, yes, our own Olivia Pope, Latanya McKitty, council staff, and my own chief of staff, Jamal Thank Wilkerson, you. deputy chief of staff, for all of your hard work. I vote aye. Thank you, council member Adrian Adams. I think I've got a disclosure also according <laughs> to our council. Sorry, colleagues, I got a little excited. I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the Pearls and Ivy Foundation of Queens is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. In addition, uh, Allen Senior Center is funded in this budget we're adopting, and I am associated with this nonprofit via membership with my church. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams, and I'd just like to remind each of our colleagues, if you have something to disclose, please do it at the beginning, at the top of your statement, and it'll be included also in your two minutes. <laughs> I'm Priest Samuel. I wasn't ready for that, so I'll put it in, sorry. <laughs> Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. As I look around this chamber today, I feel a great sense of pride and gratitude. Although we were all touched and affected by a global pandemic, we are all here again together, and I thank God for that. And I'm extremely happy to return to the chamber to do the work of the people. This is the last budget cycle for many of us here today, and these past three and a half years have not been easy. No other term of council members can count a worldwide pandemic and a complete shutdown of our city as part of their tenure, and then get right back to work and back on track. We can boldly say that we did that. We fought hard for our constituents and everyday hardworking New Yorkers and people. More specifically, we have had the opportunity to bring unprecedented resources to all of our communities and to my community in particular. We are about to vote on a budget that includes $17,594,000 coming to the 41st Council District directly from public schools to public libraries to public housing and for services for members of the entire family as a whole. We made sure not to leave anyone out or behind. And on top of that, we have been able to secure, and this is what I'm so proud of, $128,739,000 for a brand new state-of-the-art community center at 444 Thomas Boylan in the heart of Brownsville. I am proud of this significant investment to my home. I am proud of this investment to the city. I was given a job to come here and serve on behalf of the 41st Council District, and I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish. Thank you to the Finance Division for your hard work, my colleagues, my amazing district and legislative staff, and to you, Speaker Corey Johnson, for being so supportive over the entire time. I actually have it in my words. It just took up 10 seconds, y'all. So with that, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceeding that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my brother is a school teacher with this entity. Thank you so much, and I vote yes on today's budget. Thank you. Baron.
permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to say that I'm glad to see all of my colleagues, glad that we are back in the chambers, and we know we had to create a lot of space so that we could do the social distancing, and if we had taken that statue out, we would have had even more space in our chambers. This is a pandemic which has called us to pay attention to a lot of the inequities that exist and a lot of the harm that was done to so many of the communities that have been underfunded, under-resourced because of the capitalist system that we're in that seeks to capitalize on getting that money and not addressing in any equitable way the human needs that we face. I'm so pleased to see all of the good that is in the budget. And I acknowledge that. I acknowledge Latanya McKinney and her staff and the hard, dedicated work that they do. I want to thank all of my colleagues that represented my interests and your interests on the BNT, Budget Negotiating Team. However, we've been talking about we're in a pandemic and we're all in this together. And now that the pandemic appears to be slowing down, we're going back to the ports that we came from, and that's the problem in terms of the NYPD. We are once again increasing their budget. We are once again giving them the finances to expand their militarization that they have, and there is nothing that requires any kind of accountability for the officers who have killed without cause those whom we know by name, and I'm gonna call some of those names. Anthony Baez, Mohammed Ba, Sean Bell, Chantel Davis, um, Amadou Diallo, Clifford Glover, who was 10 years old, Kimani Gray, Ramali Graham, Akai Gurley, Nicholas Haywood Jr., Delron Small, and Antonio Williams. That's just some of them. And those families feel that the money that's being put into this budget for NYPD is going to pretty up the picture, put perfume on it, and put lipstick on it, but it's not gonna get to the root of what the problem is. So for that reason, I'm voting no on the budget. I do appreciate all the great things that's in it, particularly for CUNY, you know, that's my baby, but the injustices you, that Council are there, Baron. thank you, the injustices that are there will not allow me to vote for this budget. And um, I'm also abstaining on LU 790 and 791. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. This is such a new experience standing up like this, it's great. Um, First, the disclosures. I'm disclosing on the record that the College of Staten Island is funded in the budget, and I am associated with that entity, even though they actually laid me off for the pandemic. <laughs> PS, 50, well, PS 25 is funded in the budget, and we're adopting it. My wife is an employee of that entity. And the South Shore YMCA is funded, but we just found out today we didn't make the preschool, so I guess I shouldn't have to say this anymore. Um, we just had a tender care preschool, so I'll say that on the record. Um, tender care preschool is probably funded by the city in the budget, so I'm disclosing that now it'll be where my son is going to preschool. Um, I, too, will be voting no uh, on the budget, um, and although I, I share Council Member Barron's views on CUNY and the great things that we're doing there, as you can imagine, some of the reasons I'm voting no are not similar uh, to hers. A lot of them are too long to mention in the next a minute and 20 seconds, so I'll digress. I will be voting yes on 1708 and 1815, yes on 1709, 1816, yes on 1710, 1817, yes on intro 2350 and 1698, and yes on land use 790 and 791. I'll be voting no on all the others, uh, but I do commend the staff uh, of the city council for working in some trying times uh, and uh, you know, doing a darn good job, and I think it, it often goes uh, unsaid 
other than the moments we're here together in City Hall, that we do praise the work of some of our staff, and I think our staff did a tremendous job. Uh, and I commend Speaker Johnson for being a, a friend and a, and, a, and a great speaker over the last four years, and this is the last uh, budget that we have together, and uh, I would like to say on the record that I think you've done a great job over these past uh, few years, and I'm glad to see uh, serve the next six months with you at least. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Brennan. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I don't have to tell you, 2020 was unbelievably tough and a challenging year for everyone. We all put our normal lives on hold and everyone has sacrificed so much. I'm not going to lie, when I decided to run for office, I never thought I'd be trying to govern during a global pandemic. But being in office during COVID has taught me a lot. I was reminded clearly how many of our neighbors are just one paycheck away from losing their home. I was reminded clearly how inextricably bound we are to one another's health and safety. And it all showed me that when times get tough, leadership doesn't mean having all the answers. It means communicating as clearly and as often as possible and addressing every problem seriously, no matter how big or small. Above all, it means being there all the time for the people who put their faith and trust in us to serve. Rebuilding after this pandemic is gonna be a heavy lift, but we've never been more ready in this body. Now more than ever, we must fight like hell for our collective future. And with this budget today, under the leadership of Speaker Corey Johnson, that is exactly what my colleagues and I are doing. I vote aye. Thank you. Brooks Powers. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Martin DePore's Youth and Family Services is funded in the budget we are adopting and my sister is employed by this entity. Also, Allen Senior Center is funded in the budget we are adopting and my association with this nonprofit is via my membership with the church. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were all confronted by serious fiscal hardship and a rising death toll. The city council passed a crisis budget in fiscal year 21. Community programs and services endured drastic cuts. The fiscal year 22 budget comprehensively restores funding to vital resources across the board. I am proud of the work we have done to pass a recovery budget for New York and especially proud to pass my first budget as a member of the New York City Council. COVID-19 unleashed both a public health crisis and fiscal crisis, which required the city to make serious and painful cuts. Our vital service providers operated on shoestring budgets and our communities had to fight to survive with minimal support. The, this budget will make significant investments towards gun violence prevention, senior services, and business revitalization. It, re, it may represent to some a return to normal, but the pandemic is not over, and its continued effect on our health and our economic stability varies wildly across neighborhoods. Our district still has some of the lowest vaccination rates in New York State, even after this budget is enacted, we need to ensure that its program funding is distributed equitably to make meaningful and targeted impact in the communities that need it most. I look forward to overseeing that process and fighting for fairness. I thank, my, I thank all my colleagues in the council for their endless determination to make this budget a reality. And I also thank the community stakeholders and advocates who stood up to protect these critical programs. And I vote aye, thank you. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission granted. So this is my 12th year, and it's been a great honor to be working with Speaker Corey Johnson, the Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, for the new one coming to the council. Don't forget that we are still living in a segregated city where the resources that we have in the wealthy neighborhood is not the same as those that we have in the black, that we have in the Asian, that we have in the Latino, and that we have even in some community 
or from people that come from the former Soviet Union. So let's continue to fight. Even though we voted and we end the segregation in the city, go to Park Avenue and 75th Street. There's no garbage in the street. Go to Sherman Avenue 204 in a Monday afternoon and it's full of garbage. Some people have the money to be sure that they have 200 pack officers. If you live at Fifth Avenue, 75th Street, but there's only 16 pack officers to so all the park above 96th Street. The cultural institution is the same thing. It's not the same resources that we have in that formula for the cultural institution that serve the black and Latino and the brown community as the other community. So my message to the rest, the revolution is here. Let's share the privilege. Let's share everything that we have in our community. If they're safe, let's be sure that the brown, black community is safe too. And I hope that the money that we put in here is also go to the board election to clean the mess that they did yesterday. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you so much. Uh, this year was a particularly difficult year for many of us. I lost my mom, my mother-in-law six weeks after that. I know we have colleagues here that lost their parents, family, friends. This budget. It's my prayer that it will ease the pain that so many of our families are feeling right now throughout this city. It's never a perfect budget. This is my 12th one. But I do believe that it's going to advance forward. The help that so many families need right now. I have never seen in all the years I live in New York City the conditions in the state that on no fault of our own, we find ourselves due to the pandemic. But it's my hope that the funding that is gonna be put forth, it will be duly executed to, to reach those who are in the greatest need at this moment. And so with that, I wanna say and thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you for your hat done, Jason Golden, for hearing all of our complaints and why don't you have more funding in our districts and, and all regarding bills, uh, thank you. And to my colleagues for the tremendous work and to the staff that you put behind this budget under the most difficult circumstances. Thank you so much and with that, I vote aye. Chin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. To all my colleagues, glad to see all of you in the chambers. This is also my 12th year and my last budget. And I am so proud to have worked with all of you. This year has been tough. Last year was even worse. But this year, I think we fought for a budget that we can all be proud of. It really addressed a lot of the needs for every single district, every borough in New York City. And I really wholeheartedly thank our speaker for his leadership in this budget process. Of course, everyone loves Jason. He's always available for your texts and calls. And the finance team, LaTanya, you are the superwoman that really helped us fight for every dollar that our city constituents deserve. And the finance team, you guys are terrific. And I know that as chair of the aging committee, I got Doheny behind my back and Daniel Group to make sure I fight for every single dollar for our, city, for our seniors. And this year really is truly the year of the seniors because the budget is the largest ever for DIFTA. And also, we almost got to that half of 1% mark. Almost got to 500 billion. 
It's not over yet. I'm telling the administration I'm still going to fight for the home deliver meal that they did not deliver. There's a big difference between home deliver, homebound seniors, and seniors who go to senior centers. I, I just have to say that because they just couldn't get it. But look, I've been here, this is my 12th year, and I remember the first term. It was like cut, cut, cut. At least now, we can proudly say that we have supported a budget that expands services for our older adult, our senior, our youth, our young people, our immigrant community, and also making our community safer and stronger in this recovery. We all suffer a lot, but we are coming back. New York City is coming back strong, and the City Council have laid the foundation for that. So I am proudly vote I on all, and especially Thank on this you. budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Carnegie. Great, I gotta go after Margaret Chen. <laughs> nice. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, so I wanna definitely thank uh, Chair Danny Drum, Latanya McKinney and the entire finance staff for doing a great job. But I wanna point out two things that haven't been highlighted that the budget does and prioritizes. It prioritizes our small homeowners with a foreclosure, mortgage foreclosure recovery of a million dollars, which wasn't there presently, and also our small businesses. We have made a commitment to, during this pandemic, to come out of a pandemic and be a council who really is supportive of our small businesses with over a million dollars of resources available to our small businesses. So for that, I am eternally grateful. Uh, in addition to all the social justice um, ills that we've attacked through this budget, we've also uh, sought to prevent and to protect our homeowners, our small homeowners, and our small businesses. So for that, I thank you. Uh, and I vote aye. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. Permission to explain my vote. I'm not sure what we're doing here, but this is fun, guys. We're gonna <laughs> Again, honored, honored to serve this council during this time. I, I came in at, at a time of, of disarray for New York City, and I prided, my, prided myself on promises made, promises kept. And to me, wholeheartedly, what New York City needed to move forward is a holistic approach. This budget, to me, gives me that. So thank you for all the hard work and the dedication for all, from fiscal to the door maker, to the guy that opened the doors for us this morning. Thank you, I vote aye. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. <coughs> Permission granted. I would like to disclose that my son, Ruben Diaz Jr., is currently serving as the Bronx Borough President. And the budget we are adopting funds the Bronx and many of its programs. And also the NACHA is funded under the budget we are adopting. And my other son is associated with this entity. Besides that, I would like to tell you that you did a good job during you know what, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is my last time in probably in this microphone, and I would like to say that even though during these last four years we have some discrepancies and some difficult times for you to, uh, that, for, that you went through, I would have to tell you, has, it has been an honor, sir, to serve under you. God bless you, and I know that you have a long way ahead of you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Councilmember Diaz? Councilmember Diaz? Yes. We would just like for you to come back. I, I also know that I, there are some things that I don't like in this budget. 
However, because the majority of the budget includes good, very good things, I cannot vote no to hurt the other many good things, even though there are things that I don't like, but I'm voting yes. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Councilmember Dinowitz. Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a moment to first recognize how special it is here in City Hall. I know most of my colleagues have been here uh, many years. Uh, I have not. I was sworn in two months ago. Uh, before that, I was a public school special education teacher. And <laughs> thank you. And so while I'm new to the council, I'm not new to the needs of some of the most vulnerable people here in our city. Um, you know, every day I would see a child going, coming out of the lunchroom having put extra sandwiches in his bag so that he could help feed his family. I would see students struggling with mental health needs, children crammed into oversized classrooms, not getting the care and the attention that they deserve. This is, of course, in addition to our, our workers and small businesses and older adults struggling. And all of this was before the pandemic. And of course, we know the pandemic made it all worse. It pulled back the curtain on the inequity. And I taught during the pandemic, too, and I had a front row seat to the pain that so many of our families went through. And so today, in this space, we get to vote on a budget that helps fix or tries to fix some of the things that I saw in the classroom that we saw in our community. And I'm deeply humbled that the voters of the Bronx trusted me to be their voice, to make sure their needs are met. Uh, I believe that this budget does that. It gets us on the road to fix a lot of those problems that I saw every day, a lot of the problems uh, my neighbors in the Bronx are facing. I wanna thank Speaker Corey Johnson for all of his work, Jason, Ebony, Danny, all of the people who worked to negotiate this budget. I am proud to vote yes on this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Love the new energy. Drum. Permission granted. Much. I want to uh, start off by um, expressing my sincere gratitude to all of my colleagues here for having given me the opportunity to be the chair of the Finance Committee, particularly to our speaker, Corey Johnson, who knows that I was asked to serve in this, uh, in this role, in this position, and for whom I owe a deep grit of gratitude, not just for being the best speaker that I've ever really worked under, but for um, being a, one of my closest and best friends. And I just want you, Corey, to know and understand that I love you a lot, and I think that you have had a tremendous impact on the lives of New Yorkers, especially when I think about LGBTQ youth and the things that you've done coming out when you were 16 years old, making the cover of the New York Times. I saw your story with Anderson Cooper, who at the time did not even have the courage himself to admit that he was gay, and here you were, a 16-year-old person coming out on national news. Your courage, your strength, your wisdom, and your leadership of this council will never be forgotten, and I thank you very much. I am very proud to vote in favor of this budget, and I just want to say also to my colleagues, don't let the good be the enemy of uh, the perfect, and that we should all be very proud of this budget and vote yes in the affirmative for this budget, for the good that it does for the city of New York. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Eugene. Thank you, Councilmember Eugene. Councilmember Feliz. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm disclosing on the record of the City Council proceedings that the NYC Department of Education, School of Inquiry and Social Justice in the Bronx is funded in the budget we're adopting and my brother is associated with this entity. Uh, with that said, I proudly vote yes on the budget and all and I congratulate uh, the City Council, our great speaker, 
uh, his staff, Jason, uh, Ebony, and all the members of the city council. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, and just to clarify, council member Eugene voted aye. Correct? Thank you. Council member Gennaro. Madam Leader, I wish to speak on my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I certainly wish to be associated with the remarks of Danny Drum. Um, I have all, all the nice things he had to say about the speaker um, and about the budget. Um, I just have a couple of thank yous. Um, I, want to spend, I, 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 I want to thank the speaker in a very, very special way for his leadership and his friendship. It's really been wonderful. I've served under four speakers. I somehow pulled that off, but um, uh, Speaker Johnson has been great, and I really appreciate um, serving with you and your friendship. Uh, Finance Chair Drum uh, and uh, Capital Chair Rosenthal, thank you for your good efforts and for your friendship. Uh, I also thank Mary de Blasio. Um, I've known him for 20 years since we first ran for council in 2001, and he's been very nice to me since I came back. Um, I, I thank Jason Goldman, who, you know, let me, uh, you know, add my voice to the chorus of those uh, singing the praise of Jason uh, and how kind he's been to me uh, and getting me through this process. Um, all the members of the uh, Finance Committee and the BNT, thank you. Uh, all the members of the Queen's delegation, particularly our Delegation Chair, uh, Karen Kozlowitz, thank you very much for your friendship. Yeah, it's okay, clap for it, it's good, it's good, it's good. <clears throat> and uh, all the members of this body, I, I thank you. Uh, the finance staff, Latanya, and everyone who um, got us to this good day. Uh, all of the central staff, uh, which I served as a member of the central staff for 13 years, so uh, I have some sense of what you do, and I thank you very much. Uh, I wanna thank my district office staff, uh, and last, but by no means least, uh, my dear friend called the Alba of 20 years and his great team of sergeants who ran this show during COVID and got us to this much better day. Thank you guys. Everything that, I don't hear anything on that. I think we should. Uh, and the last time I was in this room, in this room for a council meeting, uh, it was December 2013. And the first time I was in this room was when I started as central staff in 1990. It's good to be home. God bless you all. I vote yes. <laughs> Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. It's good to be back and to see everyone. Um, and this is also my final budget as I leave the city council at the end of the year. And I'm truly grateful for the honor and privilege to be a member of this body. I want to join the choruses in saluting our speaker, Corey Johnson, our finance chair, Danny Drum, our subcommittee chair, Helen Rosenthal, the mighty women of the Women's Caucus. Thank you, ladies, for your spirit and uplifting each other. We want to pray for our co-chair, Farrah Lewis, and to the BLAC, to our co-chairs and, and the Bronx delegation that I'm so proud to be a part of, and really everyone. This has been a true labor of love. We have dedicated so much time and effort to make sure that this budget is a reflection of our values and our priorities and what New Yorkers need in education, in higher education, social services, safety net programs, youth services, creating safe spaces for our young people so they know that they are destined for success. So many marginalized New Yorkers that lost hope during this COVID-19 pandemic. We all have a story to tell. We all have struggles, but it's been a challenging time. I lost my political mentor and mother in Aurelia Green on May 8th, and on June 2nd, I lost my grandmother to COVID, and on this Monday, I lost my cousin who died during surgery, but yet I still stand, and I'm still blessed, and we still have to do the work of the people, and I think about the children, the seniors, the veterans, LGBT New Yorkers, transgender New Yorkers, people with disabilities. I think about victims of domestic violence and elder abuse and all the New Yorkers that rely on us every single day. We've been feeding families and giving them spiritual nourishment and giving them hope and optimism. And this budget is a reflection of that. We as a body have to create more opportunities and build economic wealth and power in our city so that young people have college and careers and families have a pathway to the middle class. 
That is what everyone wants, real affordable housing. So I am proud to vote yes on this budget, and I want to join the chorus in thanking Latanya McKinney, the Finance Division, and each and every one of you for your incredible support. It's been an honor to serve with you. I vote yes. God bless you, colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you, and my condolences. Jonai. Majority Leader, may I please explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. It, this is a uh, special budget, not only because this is the first time we're back in City Hall after a year and a half, but because of the pain that we've all uh, experienced together. Not only the economic devastation, but the loss of life. Today, I have a 51-year-old cousin who's fighting for his life because of COVID. We're not out of this pandemic and this crisis. And the work that this body has done, the staff, I can't help but mention a few, and it begins with our speaker, Corey Johnson, uh, the best speaker I've ever worked with in the city council. Oh, wait a second, he's the only speaker I've worked in the city council. <laughs> I just want to thank him for uh, always being attentive and ready and available to me on the issues that I've had. Corey, it's been a pleasure to serve with you. Like so many of the colleagues that won't be coming back, and this is their last budget, it makes it a real special budget for us. But we can't help but recognize those that worked extremely hard year in and year out. And we begin with Jason, first of all. Jason, Ebony, we have Latonia, and Chair Drum, the countless hours, the energy and the focus that you have is commendable, and God bless you for the work that you've done during these four budgets. Um, I want to commend the, the uh, council on the work that we've done with small businesses. We have a long ways to go, and there's plenty more room for improvement. But today, small businesses need our help more than ever. Our brick and mortar establishments are in trouble, and it has to do with e-commerce and consumer behavior changes, but also the price of doing business in the city of New York. So I encourage that we continue to focus on their needs because their survival means New York City will survive. Uh, and with that, I, no budget is perfect. There's a lot of good things in this budget, but I have to vote, I'm gonna be supporting this budget, but I have to vote no on introduction 2331A, pre-considered resolution 1691, 1692, 1694, 1695, 1696, 1697, and 1707. These are all real estate taxes. The 13th Council District has the highest effective real estate tax rate in New York City. We are forcing our families and New Yorkers to leave this city because of affordability and the single largest investment that they have is their home and we need to do more to keep them in their home and in our communities. So thank you. With that majority leader, I'll be voting aye on a budget with the exception of those um, that I voted no on. And if you like, I'll repeat them again. Do we have it recorded? We're good. Okay. Good. And with that, I'm disclosing on the record <laughs> of the council proceeding that PS 175 is funded in the budget we're adopting, and my wife is associated with the entity as a school nurse. CUNY is funded in the budget we're adopting, and my son is a student at CUNY. Bronx Parent Housing Network is funded in the budget we're adopting, my brother is associated with the entity. New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget. We're adopting, my sister and my wife are associated with the entity. And last but not least, New York Public Library is funded in the budget. We're adopting, and my brother is associated with this entity. And with that, I want to thank this man for reminding me. <laughs> thank you. Grodenczyk. Well, I want to state on the record that Councilmember Maisel waved his time to me, so doesn't work like that? No. Okay. You put me in the corner, but you can't keep me quiet. Anyway, um, <laughs> first let me, um, let me uh, state on the record that I have no conflicts, and uh, I am voting yes on this budget. I did want to uh, say a few words about the budget and also about a loss that the Borough of Queens suffered last week. Uh, when uh, former Deputy Borough President Peter Magnani, who was my colleague for over 10 years, uh, and the administration of Claire Shulman passed away after a long battle uh, with an illness. Um, Peter was, Claire was the commander in chief and, and Peter was the field general and 
Uh, when you look around the borough of Queens and you see places like the Queens Museum and the Queens Hospital Center and the air train and tens of thousands of school seats, um, that was really the work of Peter Mignani executing the vision of Claire Shulman. And just to prove that all politics are local still, um, the 34th Avenue Mall, which is in uh, Councilmember Drum's district, and I think it extends into Councilmember Moyer's district, that was Peter's baby, and he told Claire he was going to do it, and she said, go ahead, have some fun. So um, it's now an open street, and um, it's enjoyed by thousands and thousands of people every day. On the budget, I want to say this. Um, I want to thank my colleagues, and I want to thank the speaker especially. Um, you know, it was in this room uh, at, a, at a hearing of the General Welfare Committee under Chair Levin um, that I kind of stepped into feeding people. And um, Steve's been a great partner, but as soon as Corey became speaker, he took up the cudgels. And it's because of the work of this council that millions of New Yorkers did not go hungry last year. And when you see a line in New York City these days, unfortunately, like the Great Depression, it's a line to feed people. But because of our stubbornness and our stick to those people didn't go hungry, and so I'm proud of that. I also want to thank my colleagues, especially from the Queens delegation. With the passage of this budget, we will fully fund an education center, a center at the Queens County Farm Museum, the oldest working farm in the state of New York in my district that will serve students, over 130,000 students a year post-COVID, and every single district in New York City sends kids there save one, and I know I'm talking a long time. Thank you. Um, and I just want to say also, uh, from the bottom of my heart, the more you do that, Keith, the longer I'm going to talk. Um, I do want to say um, thank, thank you, you also for the fair student funding package. Um, I want to thank Councilman Traeger and uh, Chair Traeger, and again, the speaker, and all of you. Thank you. It's going to make a district in, difference in everybody's life. It takes me a long time to walk up here. You know? it's just, <laughs> thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for indulging me, and uh, thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful summer, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Holden. Permission granted. What, do I get Barry time? No. Oh, no? Okay. First, I, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that CUNY is funded in the budget. Uh, it's a good budget and we are, uh, that we are adopting, and my son is an employee of this entity. Also, New York Presbyterian Hospital is funded in the budget and we are, that we are adopting, and my son is an employee of this entity. Um, it, it is a, it's a difficult situation, obviously, um, with the pandemic that we faced, and we got through it. We're here. And uh, it's so great to see my colleagues in 3D finally, and uh, uh, rather than, than on Zoom for such a long time. But uh, I just want to, the budget is, uh, is a good budget. There are some things that I disagree with, obviously. But so I'm going to vote aye on all, with the exception of Rezo's 1691 and 1692, M302 with accompanying Rezo 1703, M320 with uh, accompanying Rezo 1707, for which I vote no. But uh, I just so, certainly want to thank, uh, and I'm glad he's right here, uh, the council chair, finance chair, D Danny Drum, for again, an amazing, amazing job that you just keep doing for the last few years. And I just want to thank you personally, and I'm glad I'm very close to you. But I, I got to know you as a friend, so I, again, I can't thank you enough for what you've done. And um, thank you to the finance staff, certainly, Latanya, an amazing staff, and um, all your hard work. And finally, Speaker, Corey Johnson, who has been more than a speaker to me, a friend, and that I, that I would call from time to time and talk to, and um, certainly, and his uh, sidekick, uh, Chief of Staff, um, Jason Goldman, who is looking at his phone right now, still looking at it, which we see him on, but I miss that. I actually miss that when we were, uh, uh, we couldn't see, we had a still picture of you on the Zoom, which it's, it's nice seeing people uh, again in person. Um, but again, thank you, Jason, for all the hours on the phone and all that you did and just to, to set me straight on a number of, of items, but, uh, and I can't thank you enough, and I'm going to miss this, and especially you guys in the budget, uh, but thank you, thank you all, and again, thank you, Danny, for all the work. Thank you. Kalos. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings out of an abundance of caution and transparency that I helped fund the East, found the East 72nd Street Neighborhood Association and the Sutton Park Conservancy, which are both 
funded in the budget. I did that as a council member. Uh, we are also uh, funding the Friends of the East River Esplanade, which I also helped get off the ground. I'm an ex officio non-voting board member of that. Uh, my wife is a digital marketing consultant at a company, and among that company's clients is the Central Parks Foundation, uh, which is funded in the budget. And I am the proud father of a three-year-old, and after hearing Joe Varelli talk about his kids, I realized I probably should talk about mine, I guess. Uh, and we won 3K <laughs> funding for all of Manhattan, actually all of the city in this budget, and uh, I intend to send her to 3K. I couldn't be prouder about this, and uh, I have to disclose that too. Uh, so, uh, without my uh, cat Pandora, who's been by my side for every single vote since this pandemic started, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cool. Permission granted. Councilmember Koo, could you speak a bit more into the microphone? Can I come off? Sorry. So can I start over? Yeah, you can start over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to start by thanking our speaker who led us through one of the harshest budgets of New York City ever faced last year. And now he is overseeing one of our greatest recoveries. Like many of you, this is my final budget in this, in this city council, my 12th, in fact. In many ways, the budgets we pass every year are much more than just a reflection of our values. These budgets affect the lives of everyday New Yorkers in incredible ways. It has never been a perfect process. As council members, we have been fortunate to monitor and maintain our own budgets for our districts, filling in the holes where we see need. After 12 years, I'm so proud to have secured almost $50 million for the schools in my district. I have funded hundreds of organizations who keep our communities going and who put in overtime during the pandemic, delivering meals to homebound seniors, providing STEM programming. They open up the doors to their museums virtually. And in case of Queens Botanical Garden, they literally open their doors so our community can spend time outdoors. I'm also, I'm also so happy this budget will include $25 million to restore 150 park maintenance workers, hire 80 pet officers, restore 15 green thumb staff, hire 50 urban park rangers, maintain natural forests and trails, restore tree stumps, and fully restore the park equity initiative. Finally, this budget contains important and unprecedented funding for the AAPI community who have suffered from a rash of hateful attacks. Four million dollars to respond to the needs of our community is a great start. It has been my honor and privilege to work alongside this council. I want to say thank you to all of you thank for you. your commitment to building a better city. I am proud of what we have accomplished together. I also want to thank Chair Drum and Finance uh, Division, especially Latanya, Virginia, Chima, and Monica, and La. Thank you. And finally, I want to thank Jason Goldman for his wonderful service to all of us. Thank you. I will, I don't know. Thank you, Councilmember Ku. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. This is my 22nd budget. Four speakers and 22nd city budgets. And I can tell you it's my last. 
I will not be coming back. I want to take this opportunity to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson. I knew four years ago that you would lead us down the right path. And I can say to you today, I was absolutely right. Thank you for everything that you have done for my constituents and for the city of New York. And to Danny Drum, my friend who was nervous about becoming the finance chair, and I told him not to worry, and I'm sure now you're not worried. You did a great job, Danny, and thank you for everything that you have done. And to Jason, who's always been there when you needed him, when you called him, and if he couldn't take your call right away, he said, I'll call you back, and he always called you back. Mm. And to LaTanya and the finance division, you have been great. I'm a lucky lady to have been in all your presence and to work with you. And also, I became a Zoom expert. So anyone wants lessons in Zooming, see me. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you, council member. We appreciate your service to this body. Thank you. Council member Lander. Leader, um, it is good to be back in these chambers. The past year has really shown, thrown into sharp relief what a profound obligation it is. And I want to thank all of you and our incredibly hardworking staff and so many of your constituents for what you did through so much grief over the last year to show up for each other. It has really been profound to watch. Um, I'm disclosing on the record that Women for Afghan Women of New York City is funded in the budget for the extraordinary work they do, especially in this difficult time for so many Afghan families. Uh, and my wife is an unpaid board member with Women for Afghan Women. Um, while there are many other tremendous investments in the budget this year, including 100% fair student funding and so many other things, I'm voting no on the expense budget for reasons explained in my written statement. Um, I do want to express, express profound gratitude to Latanya McKinney, uh, as well as Nathan and Ray and Regina and Rebecca, not just for all the work this year, but over the last dozen years, we are truly lucky to have such a hardworking finance staff that really show up for us and for all New Yorkers. Uh, with that, I vote no on M300 and Resolution 1699, and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to disclose on the record that of uh, the council proceedings that Streb is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my child is a student at this school, and CUNY is funded in this budget that we are adopting, and my wife is associated with this entity. Um, I would also like to um, uh, take this moment, I want to thank, um, First off, I want to just, it's great to see everybody. I'm so happy to be back. It's, it's so wonderful um, to, to see you all and, and to be uh, in person again. Um, and this is my last budget. This is my 12th budget. And it, it just means the world to me to, uh, to have your friendship and to, and to see you all. Um, I want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. Um, Corey's one of my best friends in the world. Um, he is, he has led this body in, in all four budgets as speaker um, with a tremendous amount of integrity um, and um, always with an eye towards looking out for the most in need um, and, um, and really showing up and making sure that, um, that this is a, a fair budget and a budget that, um, that, that truly helps New Yorkers. And I think back to you know, your first budget when you fought for fair fares to make sure that um, uh, that New Yorkers that are that are struggling with prov with poverty have access to affordable transportation, um, and that principle has, has led you all the way. And I, I just want to express my deep gratitude. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, Speaker uh, 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 Finance Chair Danny Drum, uh, Chair Helen Rosenthal, Jason Goldman, Ebony Meeks. Joanna Castro, Carl Dialba, and Rafael Perez, and all of the Sergeant at Arms for uh, these uh, endless Zoom um, uh, meetings that this council um, administered really wonderfully and flawlessly. So thank you all so much for that. 
Um, Dan Krupp, a uh, finance staff, Dan Krupp, Julia Haramis, Frank Sarno, Dohini Sampora, who I just adore, Regina Pareda Ryan, Isha Wright, Nevin Singh, Rebecca Chasen, Nathan Toth, Jimmy, Ra Jimmy Reyes, Paul Simone, Savannah Chu, Ray Majeski, Paul Strum, Emra Adev, Masi Sarkissian, John Russell, Chima Obachera, Krillian Francisco, and everybody in the Council's Finest Division, and especially Latanya McKinney. I, 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 it's no secret, I adore the Council's Finance Division. They're the most wonderful, professional, um, and um, they, they don't get enough acknowledgement in this city, Thank the amount you. of work that they do. And so I just, to the Council Finance Division, I love you guys. I am forever, forever um, uh, uh, you. in your in your debt. So thank you very much. Thank you, Majority Leader. Council Member Barron. Thank you. Yes, to clarify my vote, the no vote is on the expense portion of the budget. Do you have that noted? Okay, thank you. Levine. Excuse me, one moment. May I vote aye on all? I don't know if I voted aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Levine. Thank you, permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Majority. Permission Leader. granted. Well, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see all of you, all of my colleagues today, after some of the most difficult 16 months in the history of New York City. We have so much more healing to do, so much more work to address the profound injustices laid bare by this pandemic. This budget moves us forward in important ways towards those goals with historic investments in schools, in mental health in our schools. Thank you, Chair Traeger. With desperately needed restoration of staffing in our parks department. Thank you, Chair Ku. As my colleagues have mentioned, many, many important investments in the kinds of social services which are really critical to life in districts like mine in uptown Manhattan. Investments in emergency food banks and summer youth employment in uh, battling the alarming rise in anti-Asian hate crimes and more. We're voting on what will be the largest budget for the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene in the history of this city at two and a quarter billion dollars, ensuring that we continue the fight against this pandemic. And I'm really thrilled that the council initiatives inc include extra funding for a number of health-related items that will help enable faith-based institutions to work against the HIV AIDS pandemic, uh, initiatives that will uh, help bring immigrants and other peoples on the margins into healthcare through the Access Health Initiative started by the speaker um, last term, uh, an initiative to help fund child and maternal health and much more. So thank you, Speaker Johnson, for your leadership, for negotiating this budget. Thank you uh, to my dear friends, Chair Drum, Chair Rosenthal, um, thank you to the incredible Latanya McKenney. Thank you so much. And thank you to Lauren Hunt, who's the finance analyst on the Health Committee, who has just done amazing work throughout this bu budget process. Very quickly, disclosure. CUNY is, I want to disclose on the record of the City Council proceedings that CUNY is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my son is a student at this school, and I will be proudly voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Mizell has voted yes. I love Mizell. <laughs> Menchaka. <laughs> Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I want to thank Speaker Johnson, Jason, Latanya, Francis, uh, Krillian Francisco, uh, Florentine, Regina, the entire finance team. Uh, did I say hi and thank you to Jason and Ebony? Thank you for, for, the, for the entire team to put, put us together uh, and for all my colleagues in the BNT. You all stood up strong for the immigrant communities. They are our neighbors. They are who we should be honoring right now uh, in this budget and in the rest of the six months as we pull together legislation that's gonna support them. 
Uh, the work is not over, but I want to ensure that the next council, and many of you are here, many of us are leaving, continue in that bold tradition. Uh, I am voting yes. I am voting yes, uh, and one last time as the chair of the Immigration Committee, in the name of our diverse immigrant communities and the immigrant essential workers and their families. They are the ones that organized this year for the budget wins that we are, uh, that we're voting on today. And I was their voice. The voice of our immigrant neighbors risked their lives to keep our local economy, our healthcare system, and the food supply chain running throughout the pandemic. They were the ones that were the most essential, some of the most essential as essential workers, and deserve a budget that expresses their gratitude, uh, our gratitude to them and our commitment. Here are the victories, $25 million to fund legal services like CUNY Citizenship Now and the New York Immigrant Family Unity Project to ensure immigrants and, and their families and our dreamers can have competent legal counsel on their side if they want to apply for DACA, or if they are in a deportation proceeding, or if they are an unaccompanied minor with no lawyer. That's a victory. The day labor uh, citywide coalition was allocated $3.9 million. That's a million dollars more than last year. Uh, they are the ones who are courageous out there, remaining open to support our essential immigrants. The adult literacy is finally baselined at $8 million with $4 million from the city council, and a pilot that's going to assure, assure that they have equity to ensure that they have what they need in wraparound services so that our families can go to school in their neighborhoods. We funded an immigrant bail fund, the first and only in the entire country from a government, aid, from a government uh, body to, find, to fund a bail fund. Thank you. Um, the AAP, AAPI community is really important to me in my district. I'm, I represent the second largest community, uh, the largest AAPI community, and we did that. Uh, there's more that I'll publish. Thank you so much. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And uh, kudos, Chair Menchaca, for your work on the uh, Immigration Committee. Uh, it, it was hard, but, but time well spent. I want to disclose for the record that uh, Alpha Phi Alpha is being, Senior Center is, is being funded in this budget, and my mom attends the Alpha Phi Alpha Senior Center. Margaret, thank you. Um, Speaker Johnson, to your team, Jason, Ebony, uh, to my colleagues, all of my colleagues here and to the, team, the finance team, I want to thank you for, for your discourse and your engagement that has really got us here to this just budget, to a budget that, that really reflects the needs and the value and more importantly, the voices of all New Yorkers um, here in this budget. So with that, uh, I will be voting aye with the exceptions of 1694, 1695, and 1696, 1697. Thank you so much. It's so great to be back in the people's house doing the people's work, but I do echo the sentiments of my colleague, Council Member Barron. Jeff's got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. Yeah. <laughs> Council Member Moya's voted yes. Powers. I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings at Mount Sinai Hospitals funded in the budget we are adopting and my mother is associated with that entity and with that I vote yes. Reynoso. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. We are gathered here today to pass the largest budget in New York City's history. Nearly 100 billion for capital projects and services. With billions of federal aid at our disposal and the tragic lessons learned from a once in a generation pandemic, we have a unique opportunity to reimagine a city that works for the many rather than the few. I am saddened to state that the budget before us fails to move New York toward an equitable recovery and lift up those of us who have been most impacted by health, by the health and economic fallout of the past year. 
It should trouble us that many of our neighbors continue to lack access to stable housing, good schools, mental health care, and well-paying jobs, while we're still managing to find money to expand staff and overtime at the New York Police Department, an agency that largely serves to criminalize poor people. For many of us, this will be our final budget vote. However, I expect that most members will continue serving the city we love in some capacity. As we take stock of our time in the City Council, I look towards the future, and I urge all of you to reject the status quo and dream bigger on behalf of your constituents. We can no longer succumb to outdated narratives and false choices. New Yorkers deserve leaders who inspire us to tackle the, intr uh, the intractable problems and prioritize those who have histor historically been left behind by government. Each of us has a responsibility to push things a little further than we thought possible, to not accept injustice anywhere and embed equity into everything we do. While I have every confidence that we can achieve this vision, we did not do so with this budget and I am voting, therefore voting no on the expense budget today. I wanna thank Speaker Johnson for his leadership during one of the most difficult periods of our city's history. You have faced immense challenges and consistently worked through them with grace and dignity. To all of our colleagues, over the past eight years, your dedication to the people of this city is truly inspiring and I am a better person for having had the opportunity to learn from each and every one of you. Love and respect to the incredible council staff who keep the trains running on time, which is not an easy feat around here. I look forward to continuing to work with all of you in whatever roles we take on in our future. Thank you. Thank you. Riley. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceeding that New York City Administration for Children's Services is funded in the budget we are adopting. My sister is an employee of that entity and also NYC Department of Education is funding the budget we are adopting. My daughter is a student. Don't have a lot of long words. Uh, I just would like to say this was a, a very trying year. I uh, just got nominated and, and selected in January and it's so uh, grateful to see all of you in person and to meet all of you. Um, you all have done a tremendous job throughout these um, years. I know the budget is not perfect. No budget will ever be perfect, but you all should be proud of yourselves. And you laid out a blueprint for myself and my colleagues who are moving forward uh, to continue. So God bless you all. Uh, God bless the council staff. Thank you, Speaker um, Johnson. Thank you, Jay, uh, for everything that you've done. And, and thank you so much. Um, and special shout out to my Bronx delegation. Thank you. And how do you vote, council member? <laughs> I'm sorry, majority leader. I vote I don't vote. Thank you. Rivera. Permission granted. First, I must disclose for the council record that the NYPD is being funded in the budget and my mother is an employee there. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. As I cast my vote on the final budget of my first term, New York is emerging from a pandemic that has dramatically changed the way that we think about how our city responds to the biggest issues facing New Yorkers every day. Thankfully, our New York congressional delegation and the Biden administration fought to ensure our agencies are finally receiving the dollars they need and this budget offers us the chance to begin moving forward to address the challenges facing the five boroughs. In particular, I believe the investments in a citywide mental health crisis response unit, mental health resources for communities of color, and a new public health core, resources we called for last year in particular, will be a massive step forward for how we humanely respond to and treat New Yorkers who are struggling. This budget also includes other kinds of community investments we need to ensure our city's recovery continues, including the restoration of sanitation services to keep our city livable and on a path to zero waste goals, particularly through compost, with cure violence programs across the city that are community led, historic levels of funding for education and in-school support, investment in parks, open streets, newly accessible public school playgrounds, better food access and workforce development programs, support for schools, arts, culture, and small business, and restoration of the Board of Correction staff, which comes at a critical time as we push for an end to solitary confinement 
and we are stepping up for our AAPI community. And I'm especially proud that we're continuing the tradition set by Cooper Square Community Land Trust by making a full and critical investment in CLTs citywide this year, as well as millions in discretionary for affordable housing in my own district. We have an incredible amount of work to do. I'm incredibly proud of this body and what we've achieved. And I know that we owe our communities and of course our taxpayers the vigilance and effort in making sure that we do the right thing today and in our next term. Thank you to the entire finance team, to my colleagues, of course the speaker Jason Goldman, again the finance team, and of course my budget director Katie Loeb. I vote aye. Rose. Good afternoon. Permission to explain my vote? I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Sanitation is funded in this budget we are adopting, and my son is associated with this entity. I just want to first start by saying this is the best body, legislative body, and you should all be proud, and I want to give you super kudos, um, as well as our illustrious majority leader, our our city council speaker, Danny Drum, and our finance team, LaTanya and Regina, and all of, all of my, Michelle and, um, and Ebony. I, I, I don't wanna waste all my time thanking you, but I, I'm gonna do that at some point. I'd like to express my appreciation, and yes, my relief, really relief, to my colleagues and the administration for their commitment to assembling a spending plan that views the future of our great city through an equity lens. That was very important. We ensured that our budget decisions focused on the impact that would have, it would have on marginalized residents. I am truly grateful that we enhanced our spending on youth services, unprecedented amounts, and we baseline programs, much needed programs, and on education, kudos, Chair, um, Traeger, <laughs> for all your hard work that you accomplished. Uh, we finally got all the fiscal equity money. And, and while demonstrating our obligation to restore our city and what we hope is the aftermath of the pandemic, we still face many challenges. However, I see this budget as a critically important step toward recovery. These were my final budget negotiations as a city council member for District 49. And I'd just like to say that I am really proud of this body and what we've accomplished. And I wanna say congratulations and kudos to all of you. You are all phenomenal. Thank you. Rosenthal. And council member Rosenthal, hold for one moment while council member Rose. Uh -oh. I vote aye on all, thank you. <laughs> thank you, council member Rose. Council member Rosenthal. Thank you. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I'm voting out aye on all. Thank you for that. Um, I, I just want to say, uh, as an ally to my colleagues, um, that I think what we did in this budget is good for all New Yorkers, but most importantly, those who really need government services. I think that it's a budget that recognizes that the, there are communities that have been over-policed but under-protected, and we've put so much in this budget to take steps to rectify those wrongs the investments in mental health, the investments in school, the investments in cultural institutions, immigrant services, legal services, healthcare, seniors, is extraordinary. And I think we met the moment. People called on us to say, to meet this moment, and I think we did. Um, so much has happened over the last year and a half, two years. It's been devastating to so many communities. 
And this budget tries really hard to meet people's needs. And I just have to, I know I'm speaking a little bit out of school, but as a member of the budget negotiating team, I just really want to thank all my colleagues on the team. We all looked out, I, I'm not going to say we looked out for each other, we looked out for the issues we know each of us are passionate about. Permission to extend for a nano minute. Yes. You know, I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are fighting for women for maternal health, for um, black women who die at a rate eight times that of white women. You would be surprised to know who in the budget ne negotiating team made sure that initiative was increased. You'd be really surprised to know. And for seniors and immigrants and culturals, um, not naming names, but <laughs> looking at a few people in libraries, you fought so hard, and youth, um, but everyone had each other's back. Everyone had each other's back in budget thank negotiating you. team. And so I just want to thank the team, and of course finance, and of course thank the speaker, you. and Jason Rogera, and of course the majority leader. <laughs> You know how to extend your time, time, but we I must bring I. it to a close. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. Salamanca. Thank you all. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to say how excited I am to be back in the chambers, and I'm joined with my son, Aiden, who's six years old, and he lost his first tooth yesterday, so... <laughs> He's excited. Uh, before I begin, I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my wife is associated with this entity. Um, and then finally, I just want to congratulate the speaker, Jason Goldman, and the entire BNT and Finance Division, and of course, uh, Chair Drum, uh, my neighboring colleague here in the chambers, uh, for the hours and hours of Zoom conferences that we did uh, to pass one of the biggest budget in New York City history. Thank you. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Permission granted. Uh, I am disclosing on the record of the City Council proceedings that PS uh, K721 is funded in the budget. We are adopting and my father is associated with this entity. Uh, additionally, the Coney Island YMCA is funded in this budget and I am associated with this entity. I am a member. Uh, I want to just, first of all, I do, I do vote aye. I want to get that out of the way immediately, but I want to just say very quickly, uh, my first visit to a school as education chair was to Pan American International High School and Chair Drum's district, who is my forever education chair and mentor. And I'll never forget that in that visit, which was a school that became a renewal school, that received 100% of its fair student funding, we asked the administration, the school, what did you do with the added resources? And I'll never forget, they hired a bilingual social worker to better serve the needs of the immigrant students that were traumatized by the previous federal administration. And when they hired her, and she was able to connect with her and with students and their families, attendance picked up. When attendance picked up, scores picked up, and that school graduated from renewal to rise. My colleagues, I dare to ask the question, how much would it cost to get every single school 100% of its fair student funding? I was told at the time it would be over $700 million. Traeger, it was a pipe dream, they said to me. It was a pipe dream. Colleagues, we're making this a reality for every single public school in New York City. No one could take that away from you. Every digit, from Coney Island to the Bronx, every, to Staten Island, every corner of the city. And we are, I think, the largest school district in America, and we could argue that every single school will have a social worker. Yes, yes. PSAL, every high school will now have a sports program. We have more work to do, we have more work to do, but I am proud, I am proud of the education victories in this budget. B thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. It would not have happened without Corey and Jason Goldman, Latanya, my Chief of Staff. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you, Majority Leader. 
Ulrich. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm, uh, I think it's still afternoon. I know there are a lot of speeches, <laughs> and my last name starts with a U. I want to vote, uh, I want to vote aye on all. Um, and I would like a little permission to explain my vote. First, permission I want to granted. disclose, thank you, I should have asked and waited first. <laughs> I high. am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that St. Francis College, my alma mater, small college of big dreams, by the way, downtown Brooklyn, is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. So I want to disclose that on the record, if I, if I may. So I was a little concerned. I like the new layout, by the way. I was a little concerned, though, that my desk got moved all the way to the end. I think. Before December, it might be out in a parking lot somewhere, but I went from somewhere in the middle to all the way over here by the radiator, and they turned the heat on. Anyway, um, also I found out today that we get laptops. I'm here, this is my 13th budget. I didn't even know we got laptops. Is there anything else that I'm entitled to before I leave? <laughs> but uh, all kidding aside, I just want to say uh, <laughs> welcome to all the new members, the folks who have recently been elected. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to work with some really outstanding, caring, dedicated people. And, uh, and I'm not talking about your colleagues. I'm talking about the people that actually work <laughs> in the building here. I'm, no, I, uh, the sergeant at arms and, and the central staff, they do a phenomenal job helping us make, make us look good and helping us. And in my opinion, they are underappreciated and underpaid. And I just want to say to everybody that put up with me, over these 13 budgets in 12 plus years. I'm sorry, thank you, God bless you, and uh, I'm sure that we will all be together again soon and stay safe. Thank you very much, thank you. No, she don't, she don't, she doesn't play anymore. Okay, thank you. Van Bramer. Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that breaking ground is funded in the budget, and my sister Dawn is associated with this entity and does great work. Uh, there are many good things within this budget that are worthy of support, and I thank the dedicated finance team that worked tirelessly on this budget, particularly Latanya, uh, who has been an unbelievable champion of libraries and culture over the entire 12 year span that we worked together. Uh, I also respect my colleagues, uh, no matter how they vote on this budget, uh, because they have passion for this work and the people they represent. Uh, last year I voted against the budget because it did not go far enough in revisioning, re envisioning public safety. And I will do so again today for the same reason. Last year's budget fight was not just a moment, and my personal beliefs have not changed. While there is some good news for culturals and libraries in this budget, I believe we can and must continue to allocate more funding to culturals, libraries, groups that support artists, and other programs that we know result in better educational outcomes and keep young people from involvement in the justice system to begin with. Increasing the overtime budget for the NYPD just doesn't do that. I thank all those who worked and advocated for the terrific things in this budget, including incredible capital support for our public libraries. But I must vote no on the budget and M300 and accompanying resolution 1699. Thank you. Jaeger. Permission Thank granted. You. Thank you very much. Uh, always a challenge to follow my colleague from Queens, uh, but I try, and we usually do agree, if not, uh, if not on how we get to the same place, but uh, you know, we take different roads and we somehow find ourselves there. Uh, I too will be voting against portions of the budget, but not the entirety of the budget. A lot of thanks uh, has been said in this chambers today, and um, I'm thankful that the people sent me here. I'm thankful to be back here. I'm thankful to see all of you. Uh, and I'm very grateful uh, for the friendship that we've built, I think, uh, for most of us for the last three and a half years. And I'm thankful for the new friends uh, that I look forward to, uh, to the people return me in November to serving with. Um, and, uh, but I also think that we have to thank the taxpayers, the people who pay the bills around here. The taxpayers are the ones who, uh, foremost, we have to look out for when we adopt a budget and without necessarily 
saying that we don't. I'm here all day and I don't think I heard a word about thanking the taxpayers. So I'd like to thank the taxpayers. And um, because of that, I'm going to respect the thought that I had for the last three years, the place where I came from the last three years when we talk about real property interests. And I know that I ride this horse often, and I know that sometimes I slam it against the wall. But we are once again adopting interest rates that I believe are usurious. I believe they're unnecessarily punitive. And they are not in recognition of the reality that most people will pay their tax bill. They need encouragement. I'm not saying that we send a tax bill and don't try to collect it. But the rates that we are imposing upon people who can't pay their tax bill in this particular time in our city's history, when people don't have money to pay their bills, is 3, 6, and 13 percent. I think that's high. I'm not going to vote in favor of the interest rates. I'm also not going to vote in favor of the tax levy portion of the budget because, again, I think that we are taxing too high without recognition of getting the bang for the buck. Now, I also, and I apologize, Madam President, if I can have a few more seconds. I agree with um, colleagues on both sides of the aisle who spoke about why they're voting no. Um, uh, members of my party who are voting no for reasons uh, that they believe the budget ought to have included something or ought to not include something, and members of the other party who think that perhaps uh, we ought to be doing a little better in permanentizing um, in a spending plan for the city of New York for the next council and the council after that and the council after that by growing this budget so big that it is simply unsustainable. On balance, and of course I'm going to disagree with myself, I'm going to vote in favor of the expense portion of the budget because on balance I think it does more good than harm. I hope that when we return next year, I don't regret my words, um, and I hope thank that the city you. situation actually improves enough that we can afford this in the future. So with that, thank you, Madam President, for the time. Thank I vote you. no on introduction 2331, resolution 1691, 1692, 1694, 1695, 1696, 1697, 1707. Did you get all that? Am I good? Okay. And I'm abstaining on Resolution 1704, which is the bu budget modification. And my simple problem with that is, um, aside from the various changes that we've made to the budget, we put $53 million into public financing. The Campaign Finance Board has spent $100 and change million dollars on elections this year. We need to resolve how much we spend in public funds on elections so that politicians can send out glossy flyers to their constituents. It's something we have to address in the next council. Eight to one is not reasonable. And with that, I thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate thank it, you. and I hope everybody has a wonderful summer. Thank you. Mario. Thank you. May we excuse to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the College of Staten Island is funded in the budget. My son is associated with that entity. PS30 is also funded, and my other sons attend that school. Um, it's great to see everybody, um, not on Zoom and in person. Um, it's really good to be back here at City Hall uh, for our last budget. Um, as the minority leader, I've tried to bring um, a different approach a different philosophy uh, to budget negotiations. We don't agree on most of it, 98% of it probably over the last eight years. Um, but being on B&T to try and bring back things that help Staten Island and my district, I think we've done pretty well. And for that, I want to thank the speaker, Jason Goldman and staff. It's appreciate we've done a lot of good things for Staten Island and, um, in the budgets in the past. Um, I'm going to be voting no today on the budget because I just think the spending is too high. I just think it's in the wrong direction. But um, I'm very appreciative of the work that we've done to benefit my district and my borough, and I'm extremely thankful for that. So I'm going to vote, um, I'm going to announce the yes votes that I have today, and that's Rezo 1708 and 815, 1709 and 816, 1710 and 817. Intro 2350 and 1698, and land use 790 and 791, and I'm voting no on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. 
Thank you. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education and PS 235 is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sister is employed by this entity. And I just want to say I also am equally happy to be back here. It's no small feat that we have gone through all that we have gone through and that we are sitting in these chairs here today. And I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership in ushering us through this process that has allowed us the opportunity to be back here in City Hall. And I want to, I remember eight years ago when I came into this chamber for the first time as a new member, just how nervous I was and my heart was like, going pitter-patter and I was just so scared to be here for the first time and to have to speak and, and hoping that I fit in and hoping that I don't say the wrong thing at the wrong time or raise my hand or sit down. And so I want to welcome the new members, Councilmember Brooks Powers, Councilmember Diaz, Councilmember Felice, Councilmember Dinowitz, Councilmember Gennaro, Councilmember Riley. I want to formally welcome you here to this body. Um, to have won an election during a pandemic, a special election, during a time when we're implementing ranked choice voting, I mean, you had so many odds against you, but you all have persevered. You're here. We welcome you into this body. I know that in speaking to Brooks Power, she was breastfeeding while she was running for office with a two-year-old, so super hats off to you. You're like a superwoman. Um, and I'm just so proud that we've, uh, had so many dynamic women running and have stepped up to the plate. And to all of the members who decided to run for office in whatever shape, form, or fashion, whether you won, whether you lost, or whether you're involved in the BOE debacle right now, like, we really support you bearing your soul to want to serve this great city of New York. And I'm hoping that through this body, we can put our differences aside and continue to work together and to make this the greatest city in the world. So again, welcome to the new members. Please feel free to call us. Please feel free to, to lean in on us, ask questions. Do not be, uh, don't try to fit in so much that you're missing information because you wanna show that you know your stuff. Ask away because there's so much that you missed in terms of orientations and so many things. So we thank you so much and we welcome you. And I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I want to thank all the staff that has made today possible, again, the Finance Division, but also as uh, Council Member, I believe it was uh, Gennaro said earlier, I really want to thank all of the sergeants who have done an amazing job on Zoom in person. I really, really want to thank Carl and, and Raphael and their team. They've done a great job. Come on in. I want to give, give you guys a big thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the, the city clerk, of course, Mike McSweeney, and also the folks that work, the folks that work in legislative documents, uh, uh, Matt and Billy and Jonathan. Thank you all. Lance, our parliamentarian. Uh, thank you to everyone. I want to thank uh, Cece downstairs who helped get the members lounge ready and everything all set for today. She has been working overtime. Uh, I, of course, want to thank Ebony and Genevieve uh, and, and everyone else. Uh, Mike as well. Sean. Uh, I want to thank. I want to thank everyone. And I, I want to thank, of course, uh, Jen Firmino, who's been working around the clock as well. So thank you to everyone. Uh, I, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings, I've never done this before, that I am a student currently enrolled at Columbia University. Uh, and Columbia University is funded in the budget, not the school that I go to, but Columbia uh, University is funded in the budget. So I wanted to uh, disclose that. And uh, with thanks to everyone, I hope everyone has a safe summer and spends some time with their families and gets their rest and rejuvenation. I vote aye on all. There we go. All items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions with the exception of the following items. 
M300 with resolution 1699 and resolution 1700 have 39 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. M301 and resolution 1701 and resolution 1702 have 43 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. Quiet in the chamber. M302 and resolution 1703 have 42 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. Resolutions 1691 and 1692 have 40 in the affirmative, five in the negative, no abstentions. M320 with resolution 1707 have 40 in the affirmative, five in the negative, no abstentions. M317 and resolution 1704 have 42 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. M318 and resolution 1705 has 43 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. M319 and resolution 1706 have 43 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. Resolution 1693 with 43 in the affirmative, two in the negative, zero abstentions. Resolution 1694, 1695, and 1696 have 40 in the affirmative, five in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2331A has 41 in the affirmative, four in the negative, zero abstentions. Resolution 1697 has 40 in the affirmative, five in the negative, no abstentions. M's 276 through 282 and M numbers 303 to 307 have 43 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. Finally, land use items 790 and 791 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Councilmember Yeager, is that correct? Any objections to providing Councilmember Yeager unanimous consent to clarify his vote? I see no objections. Come up, walk to the front, and state your vote. Yep. The accompanying M's for Reso 1691, 1692, 1694, 1695, 1696. 1697 and 1707 and 1704. Whatever M's came with that. I know some of them didn't. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. So do you wanna reread those, Mr. Clerk? No, we're okay? Nothing's changed, it was the same way you said. Okay, Madam Majority Leader. I now formally declare All items are adopted on today's calendar. I now formally declare that the executive expense revenue contract budget, the executive capital budget, and the community development program for fiscal year 2022, all as modified and all in accordance with the New York City Charter, have been hereby adopted as of 3.54 p.m. on this 30th day of June, 2021. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members, are there any council members signed up to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. The stated meeting of June 30th, 2021 is thankfully hereby adjourned.
check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. 